Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. Today we're going to be going over, going over creating points, lines, areas, and buffers interactively. So we're gonna go over things like the drawing toolbar, as well as the buffers tool and the buffers toolbar. If anyone has any questions at any point during this webinar, feel free to type those questions into the questions box on your GoToWebinar toolbar. Uh, I'll be spending the first, the first uh, 20 or so minutes for the instructional portion of this webinar, uh, where we'll go over the um, the scheduled topics, and the last 10 or so minutes will be dedicated to a question and answer. Uh, so I'll answer any questions that were asked at any point during the webinar at the end. Uh, you'll, this whole webinar will be recorded, and you'll receive a link to the recording tomorrow via email. So that pretty much covers it, so we can go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start out by plotting a spreadsheet of data. So I'm going to be choosing this new map of my data table or spreadsheet option. And my data is saved in my training folder. So I'll browse to that here. And it's this local establishments.xlsx sheet. So the first step is going to be to match up any uh, geographic fields from our spreadsheet with their appropriate matching geography. I want to make sure that address matches up with address, city matches up with city, state matches up with state, et cetera. Next. Uh, I see a couple of people asking for the dial-in information. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a second to link that now. Uh, it is displayed in the email or the invite email, uh, but I will go ahead and post it in the chat just so that you have it. And if the screen looks blurry, uh, it is most likely just the window is the wrong size. So you may just need to grab the edge of your uh, go to webinar window and just try to resize it a bit. Uh, also, if you download the recording once you get it, it will not be blurry. So, so give me one second and I will link that. So there is the number. I need the pin as well. Give me one second to get that. Okay, that should be all that's needed. So I'm gonna be locating the records here by address, zip code, or city. I'm gonna be importing my data. And I don't need any themes, uh, and I don't think I need labels either for this map, so I will leave this on none and display labels unchecked, and we'll go ahead and hit finish. So it's gonna take a second to run through my spreadsheet and plot those uh, addresses on the map. Uh, I wasn't aware they needed access codes as well. Give me one second.
Okay, so resuming. I'm going to be creating uh, some freehand shapes with the drawing toolbar. So the drawing toolbar can be found at the bottom left corner of your screen. It has a pointer tool on it, as well as some different shapes, a freehand shape, and then some symbol tools at the end. If you don't see the drawing toolbar, you can open it with the editing or edit menu. You'll see drawing, and then make sure that toolbar is checked. Uh, the default location is in the bottom left of your screen, but it may be in other places as well. Uh, as with all the toolbars, you can dock it by moving it around. So if I move it to the bottom left, it will dock there. So first we're going to create a freehand radius, and this is going to allow us to export points within a circle and also get demographics within a circle. So I will click on freehand radius in the bottom left. I'll click where I want the center to be, and I'll set the number of miles. So let's say I want a 10 mile circle. It'll give us 10 mile circle. And then to export all of the points and demographics that are in this area, we can just right click on it and choose export to Excel. So we have a world city layer or sheet with the cities in the area, city and town with smaller cities in the area. Uh, and then we have our sheet one layer, which has all of the addresses or all the points that were in my spreadsheet that fell into this area, as well as the straight line distance and travel time to the center of the circle. And then we have a census overlay, which displays uh, a bunch of census information about this area. If you want to delete this circle, you can just right click it and choose delete and choose yes. So next I'm going to go over freehand shapes and you can find those. Sorry, give me one second. Uh, Okay, sorry, there was some weird feedback going from my microphone. Um, next up, we'll do freehand shapes. So in the bottom left, we'll click on freehand shape. And we'll click a few corners to draw our shape. So click once to start drawing and then continue clicking corners or clicking to add corners. And then when you're ready to close, just double click. And then you can export this area by right clicking and choosing export to Excel. And again, we have the same information. So we have a sheet one layer, as well as a census overlay that has uh, information about the area. Okay, so I'm going to display a poll next, which is going to ask, uh, actually, I'm not going to display a poll quite yet. So the next thing I'm going to display is how to create buffers. And buffers can be used when you want to extract demographics around a number of points in a layer at once. So for example, if I wanted to find a uh, 
a demographic or demographic information around each of my individual points in this layer. So maybe you have facilities or customers or stores, anything like that, uh, and you want to find out information uh, in about the surrounding area of each of those. You can use buffers to do that. So we're going to click on the Create Buffers tool up at the top. And I'm going to create my buffers around all the features, and we have a few different options here. So I'm going to display a poll, which is going to ask how many buffers you'd like to create. Okay, so if you wanna create buffers around uh, only a few of your points, or sorry, if it's only around one or two points, I would recommend using the freehand shape tool that I showed before. If you're creating it around multiple points and you have a layer, I'd recommend using the buffers tool that I'm using now. So I'm gonna be creating my buffers around all the features in this layer. I'm gonna be creating buffers of fixed sizes and we'll do uh, just five miles per buffer. You can also add additional sizes by adding commas. So if you want to add, you know, five, 10, 15 miles, this would be three rings around each point. But for now, and for the sake of time, we'll just do one uh, buffer around each point of five miles. If I want a separate report for each of my points, so if I want the demographics for around each individual point, I can check this box for separate buffers, and I can choose a field for my data to use as the name for each location. Finally, if I want demographics, I can check the box for calculate demographics and the box for create a report if I want. If you want to customize the demographics that you're getting, you can choose the configuration button and click on the aggregation settings. This will open a box of the current um, fields included in the report. If you want to add additional fields, you can click on filter and highlight fields on the left side and choose add to add them to the right side. So I will go ahead and hit okay. Okay, so we have each of our locations here that I created buffers around, and then we have all our demographics that I chose in my report. So we have things like median household income, uh, change in median household income, there are population estimates over here, populations of different age groups and races, uh, and a lot more. And as I mentioned, you can add and remove any of the uh, demographics that you'd like to see or don't want to see. 
Finally, if you want to export this table to Excel, you can choose File, Export Table to do so. Once you're done, you can close it. And if you want to reopen it again, uh, it does create a layer that has all the rings around each location. So if we zoom in, we can see all these five mile rings around each point. And if you want to reopen that demographic report, you can just right click on the sheet one buffers layer. Yours may be called something different, but it should end in buffers and choose, oops, choose new data view. And it'll reopen that report. And to remove it, you can just right click and choose remove. So the last thing I'm going to be going over is uh, creating buffers that encompass a certain population or a certain amount of demographic. Uh, so I'm going to once again choose create buffers. And I'm once again going to do all my features, but this time I'm going to choose build to value. You can also use these options for variable size and evenly spaced. They do similar things to the fixed sizes buffers, but with additional options. Uh, so variable size will let you pick a value from your spreadsheet that contains how large each buffer should be. So if you know that you know uh, around some of your points there should be a five mile buffer and around others you want a three mile buffer, you can use this um, option to set those. And evenly spaced just allows us to more easily create um, step-by-step -step buffers. So it's similar to the fixed sizes, which I showed earlier, uh, but if you wanna do you know, buffers from five miles to 100 miles uh, in increments of like, I guess five miles would make sense, uh, then this would give us those buffers. I'm not gonna go over those in too much detail. Uh, we're gonna use build to value because it's a much more popular option. Um, so I'm going to choose a value that I want to build these buffers to. So let's say, for example, I want each buffer to contain, and we'll actually just do the visible features in this to make this a bit faster. And that'll just do what I'm showing on my map right now. Uh, we'll have each buffer contain 30,000 people. And we'll once again take the buffer names from the name of each location. Now we can also check the box to calculate demographics, um, and this will build us out the same demographic report, but for these new buffers we've created. Uh, so obviously the population for all these buffers will be roughly 30,000, uh, but other uh, demographics might be important to see. So we'll go ahead and check that, and I'll hit OK. Okay, so we'll see that these buffers are all going to differ in size. So we see some in more rural areas are going to be much larger than others that are in more populated areas, which makes sense. Uh, and if I return to my data view here, they should contain roughly all 30,000 population, which they do. They're all very close. And then we see that the other demographics are all going to be pretty variant. 